Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Let's worship God before we start. Let's sing this song. Lord, I will bow to you. Lord, I will bow to you. To no other gods but you. I will worship you, nothing hands have me, but you alone. Sing on one time, Lord, I will bow to you, Lord, I will bow to you, to no other gods, but you I will worship you, nothing hands have made, but you alone, I will lay, I will lay down my idols, thrones I have made, all oh, that have taken my bow to you, to no other gods, but you alone. Sing it one time, Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you, to no other gods, but you I will worship you, nothing hands have made, but you alone. I will lay, and I will lay down my idols, thrones I have made, all that have taken my heart. I will lay down, and I will lay to no other gods except you God our Savior our Lord our King of God and Father Lord I pray that we will not worship anything else but you God so help us to fix our eyes on you and focus on you Lord that is eternal that is everlasting oh God in Jesus name I pray Amen Amen Hi good day good to be back in office and uh, you know to be able to address you from office uh, and as we continue from uh, the Sermon on Mount, I'm very sure you have been blessed by the teachings of uh, Pastor Tom and uh, Pastor Eden as well. And uh, today is my portion, and I will be taking through uh, the studies of uh, Jesus teaching on uh, laying up treasures in heaven. And uh, tomorrow I will handle on the issue of... Uh, our anxieties. So, but today let's look at 
laying up treasures in heaven. From verse 19 to uh, verse 26. Uh, let me read it for you from the New King James Version. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamb of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No, no one can ever serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal, loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So dear friends, uh, it's a very straightforward lesson that Jesus is teaching. And you know, Jesus understood the heart of man. Jesus understood that is, that is in, the, in the, the greed that is in mankind. You know, it's sometimes we uh, constantly like to, uh, you know, identify certain race, certain people group uh, as greedy, as uh, people who uh, love money. They will do anything for money. Uh, but I want to say this, that this is not just confined to race or nationalities or people, certain people that we tend to brand them uh, that way. This is the issue of the whole human race. Uh, that's our heart and that's our, that's the issue and we're going to look at that. So what is Jesus teaching today? Uh, there are four things that I want to uh, point out and expound on it. The first thing <coughs> That Jesus is teaching is don't lay up. Don't lay up what? Don't lay up treasures. So is the, Jesus teaching us not to save? <laughs> is that what he's trying to say? That doesn't seem to be good stewardship if we don't save. Is that what he's actually trying to say? I don't think so. Uh, he's just teaching us don't save where it's unsafe. Okay, this is not from internet, this is from your pastor. Don't save where it's unsafe. That's what he's teaching us. If you look at it, he says it, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth is unsafe because moth can destroy it. Or ras, because they tend to save a lot of ornaments and other kinds of metal or, 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 or uh, gold and silver and things like that, rust can destroy it, and where thieves break in and steal. Okay, where thieves can break in and steal. So think about this. Think about what Jesus is teaching. He's not saying don't store up, but he's saying don't store up in unsafe place. So when, when our thinking changes, uh, then our Saving styles also change. So it all starts here. In those days, people save at home. You know, when banks were not around, people tend to save at home. And many times robbers will come and uh, steal the stuff. And even sometimes even some people have been killed. Uh, you know, we hear about this. Um, let me tell you a little bit of my own story, my family story, you know. Uh, my dad was the first newspaper vendor in the whole of Penang, okay. So he, he, he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, his whole district was all the way from Butterfringi Army Camp and right up to Klawai Road. So he knew a lot of people and he's the first one to start this business. And so we did well. Our, our family was doing well. And, uh, you know, as, as most Indian family, 
we like to invest uh, in gold. Uh, and so my mom, she really loved gold and my dad will, you know, just buy gold and uh, she will keep them and, uh, and she will wear it on certain occasions. Uh, th those days we were Hindus and when she goes to temple, she will wear it and parade it. Okay. So this is what happened. This is from my dad. You know, he would uh, teach us about some of these things. And he would tell us that uh, twice, you know, when my brothers were little uh, children, twice uh, our family home was broken into and all the gold uh, that we had was stolen. And it's worth a lot, a lot, a lot of jewelry, a lot of money that we lost. And uh, this happened not just once, but twice. I guess Jesus knew about all this uh, 2,000 years ago. It was probably happening 2,000 years ago where thieves break in. And sometimes when people tend to, uh, uh, you know, bury their treasure, you know, moth and rust can just, uh, you know, corrode it and destroy uh, the treasures. And Jesus is actually teaching, don't, don't save where it's unsafe. Okay? He's not teaching us not to save, but he's teaching us don't save where it's unsafe. In fact, the Bible teaches us to learn from the ants. Okay? So turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 6 to 11. And from Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 to 11, you will find this is what the Bible says. It says, Go to the ant. You sluggard. He's talking to lazy people. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways. Whose ways? The ant's ways. And be wise. Which having no captain, overseer or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer. And gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and, you, and your need like an armed man. So what is the author of Proverbs teaching us? He's saying, look, you know, we are to work hard if we want to live properly. If not, poverty is going to come and hit us big time. He's saying, learn from the ants. Watch the ants. You know, they don't have captains. They don't have rulers. They don't have administrators. But they know when to work and when to, to save. Now, where do I get save? Remember, it says they work during harvest. They work during summer. They work during harvest because during the harvesting time, grains will be dropped on the ground. And that's what the ants will come to pick up and take it to their nest. And they will store it up during summer. Why are they storing up during summer? They're storing it up for winter. When there is no more harvest, when there is no more food, they're storing it up for winter so that they can eat during winter and this is what Proverbs is teaching us so but you, you need to realize something save just what you need when you cannot work in other words the ants were saving for the time where they cannot work they don't save for eternity they save for the winter season and when winter is over and spring comes and things start growing again they start working again because they know if they store the food for too long it will be useless in the same way we got to learn from the ants that we cannot save more than what we need why do I say that? Especially in the seasons that we're living in right now. 
Why do I say that? Dear friends, those who are listening, listen carefully. I want to say just as Jesus said, those who have ears, listen. <laughs> There's coming a time. The Bible has taught us during the end times that we cannot buy and sell anymore because, you know, without the mark of the beast, the Bible says very clearly, without the mark of the beast, we can't trade. So all the money you, we are saving, today we don't save in the house like my family used to do. We don't bury our wealth like people of those days. We put them in the bank. Remember I said Jesus is teaching to save in a safe place. But it's coming a time where even that is not safe because without the mark, Bible says on the forehead or on the forehead. Yeah, on your arm or on your forehead. If we don't take the mark, we can't use our own money. And the Bible is very clear. If we take the mark, then we disqualify ourselves. We disqualify ourselves. So dear friends, is it safe? Okay. Is it safe to save where you are sa saving right now? Because there's coming a day that you cannot use it anymore. And I'm pretty sure the seasons are pointing towards that day. People are getting really excited about cashless societies. You know, they think if we don't carry cash, Robbers can't steal from us anymore. But I just want to say this to you. Wait and see what is coming next. Wait and see what is coming next. No wonder Jesus was teaching us 2,000 years ago what is very relevant for us today. Don't save where it's unsafe. So, if we cannot save where it's unsafe, so what is Jesus telling us to do? He says, do lay up, do store up, do save. Where does he say save? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in because they don't go to heaven <laughs> and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, it's, Jesus is just amazing. So he's teaching us to save where it is safe. Okay? Jesus is teaching us save where it can last forever, for eternity. Wow! He's teaching us good investment. He's teaching us to invest in a place where it will be profitable for you and me forever. And where is that safe place? It's heaven. So how do you save in heaven? Now, in this passage, Jesus doesn't tell us how to save in heaven. But he has said it later on in Matthew chapter 19, when he was teaching the young rich ruler. If you remember the story of the young, young rich ruler, he came to ask Jesus, what must he do in order to have eternal life? And Jesus asked him some questions about great commandment and the laws. He was really a very educated man. He has memorized all this. He has said it very uh, eloquently to Jesus. And then finally, Jesus says, you lack one thing though. And in verse 21, he shows this, Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. This is what it says. Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. 
Here, Jesus shows clearly how to save treasures in heaven. No wonder the early church, now if you read in Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 47, you will find that the early church, the early believers, remember in verse 41, it says they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Now, what did the apostles teach? You know, on Sunday's message, I have already shared uh, what should be the scope of our ministry, the subject of our ministry, and it is about teaching what Jesus has taught us. The early church was concentrating on everything that Jesus taught. That's why in our church, during our devotional times, the pastors are taking time to teach and disciple from what Jesus has taught. You see, Jesus taught this, and the early believers in the early church followed it. They, they devoted themselves. So no wonder they went and sell their possessions and gave it to the apostles so that it could be distributed to the poor to the ones who had nothing, to the orphans, to the widows. I'm very sure the Lord took care of them. The Lord, the Lord took care of them. So the, the, the following verse uh, Jesus said, if, if, you know, if you, you, save where, you save where it is safe and where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, it's very, very uh, real. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Um, for us, some of us, our treasure is our children. And our heart is constantly thinking about them. For some of us, our treasure is our business, our company. Our heart is constantly thinking, how can we, you know, uh, do better, grow better? But for many who have decided to follow Jesus, their heart is in heaven and for the things of heaven. Jesus wants us to set our heart in his teaching in heaven. Because if we store our treasures in heaven, that's how that's where our heart will be. I want you to be honest with yourself today. Ask yourself this question. Where is your heart? Honestly, be real. Where is your heart? And we need to repent if we have placed our heart in the wrong place. If we have placed our heart in the wrong place. Let us, dear brothers, Store up riches in heaven. This doesn't mean that we don't keep some for ourselves, for our old age. But we keep what we need. We shouldn't be greedy. You know, sometimes we keep so much because uh, we want to help our next generation. But I want to say this to you. Riches doesn't really help the next generation. What really helps the next generation is good value and good character that we need to invest in them. That's what keeps them going. Riches can destroy families, destroy lives. You know, you have seen for yourself, you know, People who are barely surviving don't go and have affairs. You know, people who can't make ends meet, they got no time to think about affairs, no time to go and think about sin. But people who have cash, people who have so much money that they can just throw their money to do anything, tend to be more prone. I'm not saying they always do it. But I'm saying they're more prone to fall into sin. Uh, and uh, no wonder in many of the other teachings of Jesus, you will find that. You will find that. And the early church taught about this very clearly. 
And for us, we need to understand this today, that if we just leave riches to our kids, we're going to destroy them. What we need to leave behind for our next generation is Christian values, kingdom values, the teachings of the Lord to be practiced. The third thing that I want to bring across, the problem in this passage is the eye. The eye is the real issue. Jesus said the lamb of the body is the eyes. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Jesus is basically saying the whole problem is the eyes. Why do people fall into temptation? Why do people fall into sin and adultery and many other things? Uh, covetousness is the eyes. David fell because he was walking in the roof and looked at another woman, another man's wife, not just another woman, another man's wife taking bath, washing herself. That led him into sin. That led him into sin. When we look at things and allow greed to enter, we become covetous. We want a house like the other person, the car like the other person. We're never contented with what we have because the eye is looking wrong. Let me tell you a little bit about myself, my story. Now, one of the things that I like to do in my free time is watch documentaries about yachts. I go into YouTube, I look at how people make boats, Boat houses, I love them. I love boat houses. And I, 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 I study different people, how they make it, what, how much is the cost. Uh, you, know, it's, you know, I watch things like that. Yeah, you probably think, I never knew a pastor did things like this. Another thing that I like to watch is, it's called tree house masters. I love tree houses. I really love them because from small, my favorite book, my first book that I've ever finished reading was Robinson Crusoe <laughs> and the Treasure Island. And the whole idea, the adventure of building a house on the tree has always been around me since childhood. So I watch uh, tree house masters, how they build that. The other thing that I like is motorhomes. I love motorhomes, seriously. And every time I watch that, and I always tell my wife, you know, uh, this, you know, we should, we should build a boat house. Uh, we should build a tree house. We should get a motor home or buy an old vehicle and turn it into a motor home. And my wife looks at me, shakes her head. She's, she's a wise woman, full of the Holy Spirit. And she asks a wise question. What do you really want? You see, the eyes makes you confused. It has an effect. The, it affects your heart. What you watch, what you see, affects your heart. And why do people become greedy? Because they're watching wrong things. They're watching people who have a lot and they want that. If you constantly watch what, how to make more money, more money, that will affect your heart. And that's what your heart will always want. Your value of people will be very different. You will value people's success, not their character. That's why a lot of Asian culture, they value someone that is successful. Whether the fellow has had 10 wives, as he had about five affairs, no, it's okay. You know, even great leaders, but sometimes even pastors, they can get away with their mistakes because how our Asian culture value is on <laughs> the success that is not related to character. And today, we got to think about how we value uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, do we value them by their success and their possession above character? Wow. That's something that we need to think about. So, use your eyes wisely. Watch 
how people help others. You know, so I said, I need to cut down on this boat making videos, cut down on three house videos, cut down on motorhomes and start watching more of people who are all out to help others. Watching Christians who have been very successful in their business and how they're using their money to glorify the name of Christ. Now, it's not wrong to be rich, dear friends, but it's not being rich for yourself. It's being rich for Christ. There are so many people, people uh, that I really admire, Chick-fil-A owners, they really invest in the extension of God's kingdom. Hobby Lobby. You know, I saw these guys in America. They invest a lot in the kingdom of God towards the education of Christian young people. They invest whatever they earn. They invest. There are many, many, many godly, godly, spiritual rich people. But they are rich for Christ, not for themselves. They are rich for Christ. Watch videos on struggling poor people. It will turn your heart. Light will enter your body through your eyes. Watch the right thing. And finally, the last portion, number four. You have to decide your master. You can't live with two husbands. <laughs> you can't live with two wives. It says very clearly in this scripture, at the end, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He says, you cannot. If today you are thinking you can serve both, I want to say this to you. Heaven will definitely not be your destination because you're going totally against what Jesus already said. He said, you cannot. Cannot means cannot. That's a revelation. You cannot. So, if you have had the thought that you can serve two masters and still make it there, I have news for you. You cannot. You got to choose today for yourself. Just like young rich ruler, he thought he can serve two masters. When God challenged him to sell, Jesus said, sell, give it to the poor and come. He couldn't. His heart was sad. He went away. The Bible says very clearly, for he had a lot. For he had a lot. So dear friends, choose your master. Mammon of Jesus. Choose your master. Don't be an adulterer when it comes to God. You know, sometimes we don't adulterate with other women, but we can adulterate with God by choosing to serve God riches by choosing to serve mammon mammon was a god of wealth the people of ancient times worshipped mammon that's why jesus said very clearly you can't serve two masters that's the end now i don't need to say much just for yourself who is your master Christ or men. So that's all I have for you this, this day. And I pray that it would have helped you, these four points. And I pray that we don't need to judge others and we don't need others to judge us, but we definitely need to judge ourselves. It's very important, church. When we read the Word of God, we got to allow the Word of God to sink into our heart and judge the condition of our heart. Who is your God? Who is your God? I urge you to follow the principle of Jesus. Lay up, store up, 
treasures in heaven. And I've already showed how can you do that? By helping the needy, by helping the poor. Go out and touch lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this day for your Lord, for touching us through your word. You just are amazing, God, how you teach us through your word. Lord, help us not to store up, lay up treasures on earth. Help us to lay up or store up treasures in heaven, Lord. Lord, please. Remove the greed that is in us. Remove the wrong role models that we have placed in our lives. We have put wrong role models in our life. Our only role model should be those who follow Christ with all their heart. And so, Lord God, I pray today that you protect and cleanse this eye, the light to the body. Lord, Cleanse it in Jesus' name that we will look away when things are becoming attractive to us. Lord, help us today to choose and decide whom we will be loyal to, whom we will be faithful to, and help us to choose you, Jesus, and not mammon. Help us to heed your warning. Your warning is, we cannot serve two masters. Those of us who are watching and those who will watch in future, I pray that this teaching will transform our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen.